Hello and welcome back. And uh, today I'm with Ramona Longero. Longero. Okay. And you're the president of the Foothill Charter Schools. Yes. Okay. So we had two stories. Actually, I think we were done about four stories uh, about your group this week. And I want to thank you. You know, we got quite a lot of traffic from uh, the stories that came to our website that were uh, looking at the stories. Good. And I want to tell everyone that. Uh, our news in depth this week is going to be with Ramona. We'll be talking about the Foothill the Charter Schools more in depth, and that program will be on Monday. Okay, so let's start off today. And last night you were at the uh, at the uh, meeting with the mm -hmm. ACUSD. Yeah. Tell us what happened. It was good. We had a lot of a lot of supporters there. We had um, a lot of speakers that we had lined up so that we could give them some information, let them know that the community was looking for this type of thing, especially with the year that everybody had last year. I think when we put our charter application in last time, people realized that there were some issues, but last year there was a lot of kids in, in classes with 32 children, um, a, lot of, a lot of crowded space, a lot of combination classes that maybe weren't appropriate for every kid. Um, so I think this year, and that's why the, the turnout was larger, there's just a lot, of, a lot more support this time. Um, and I think it went really good. I think all of our speakers did very well, um, and I and I think a lot of the board was receptive. And I even spoke with a few of them afterwards, and they they seemed very receptive. So I, I look forward to giving them further information over the next three or four weeks before they vote. Okay. Now, since we live in Amador County, we don't have an, a charter school. Mm -hmm. A lot of us probably don't know what a charter school is. Well, there are a couple of charter schools here, but they're not run by Amador County. Okay. They weren't approved by Amador County, so they went to either the State Board of Education or they went to our neighboring county. Okay. Um, so, um, sorry, what was the question again? Well, uh, I'm not, still not sure if that kind of describes what a charter school is. A Maybe charter school is a public, it's a public school, but it's run in a private way. So, you just, you don't have to follow all the rules and regulations that a big um, school system has. So, we get our funds and we do what we need to do for our children instead of having to follow the bureaucrat bureaucratic rules. Okay, but you still have to come up with the same standards uh, for each grade still level? Still have to, to pass all the tests. They still have to graduate into the next grade. They still, they still have all those standards. Okay, now there's an interesting word that came out, and it was called like leveling. Mm -hmm. Like um, when all the school, when the kids get leveled, uh, things work better. Explain that word to us, if you would. Leveling is, so um, you have a child and they're super at reading, they're super at writing, they're super at everything but math they have a problem in. So they may be advanced, so you have a third grader, technically it's a third grader, they're doing fourth grade level reading, um, so we would allow that, we would let them do that and, and say they need second grade level math, we would allow for that. Okay. So they're not stuck in that one grade curriculum, they're mm -hmm. able to, to do what they need to do. That sounds a little bit like a, uh, uh, an alternative school that we had in, in uh, Southern California where I moved from mm -hmm. that uh, the kids would go to the classes basically that they were interested in and also uh, could perform in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe, like you said, they would be uh, really outstanding in history or something, but maybe mm -hmm. on the other. So it was, you could go to classes, but they weren't, the class wasn't uh, a horizontal class. Right. It didn't keep them in a box, okay. in, in a little box, like that little girl that was in a K-1 combo that we read about last night. And she, um, you know, if, if she's not, if there wasn't leveling, which there isn't in Amador County, she was a bored kid. She started to hate school okay. because, you know, here she finished all her work and she's, she's stuck with the kindergarten work. Okay. Now, do they, uh, do they have classes that are uh, scheduled to, you know, that, that they have to go to every day? Oh, they'll have the regular, everything will be... It will be just like regular school. Okay. So you, you cover your topics every day, um, and everything has to be hit, especially those reading, the math, the science, that all has to be hit. Um, and it'll probably be done like the early part of the day when you know everybody's thinking, and then the fun stuff will happen more in the afternoon. Okay, and now how about like uh, from uh, K-12, mm -hmm. how, do, how does, well, obviously it works because you, you, know, you have from kindergartners to, mm -hmm. to uh, seniors. Well, it's starting uh, out as K through five, and okay, then every so year we're going to add a grade. K five and adding a grade. A every year we'll add a grade. Okay, yeah. I, I was. So uh, the children that are going to end up in our first fifth grade class yeah. will end up our first graduates. Okay, so I kind of know what that was like. I went to a high school that added uh, grades, Catholic high school. That went, you know, uh, I think I started as a, a sophomore, and each year we added a grade. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, that's not too overwhelming then when, uh, when you're... Right, we should like start that. out with 120 students. How does, your, how does your school get its teachers? 
The same way any other school does. So we'll have an application. As we're approved, we'll have all our applications ready, applications for the children to apply to school, applications for the teachers and um, a permanent principal to apply for the school, and we'll go through the same kind of hiring process, a hiring committee, and, um, and really look into the backgrounds and make sure that they're great, a really great teacher for alternative education. Okay. Very now, flexible. Now, how about a facility for the kids? Uh, well, there's, there's some I mean, options outside of the school district, so there's still, um, we're, there's still some interest with Safeway Corporation and they, because they own the building that Grocery Outlet's in, and okay. uh, there's a portion of that building left. So that would probably work on a temporary basis, and there's okay. a couple of other options like that. But since the school district is going to be looking at a, some kind of a survey and um, maybe consolidating some schools, we want to take advantage of um, the Prop 39 Act which would allow us to take over a, an, either an empty school or um, um, we could even take over a partial school. There's a, a charter school in Dixon that we went and visited, an excellent charter school, and they share a facility. Half of it is school district facility, and the other half is the charter school facility, and it works really well. But seeing as we're going to be preschool through 12th grade, we would love to have a large enough facility to grow into that. And um, that would... It'll be a lower cost for us. It'll take over an empty building if the district's going to have one anyways. And we will, we will be paying rent. It'll be at a discounted rate, but we would be paying the school. So, so that would be a plus for the school district, too, to be okay. able to collect some I have one us. other uh, quick question. I think we have about a minute uh, to answer that. In. And, uh, boy, I set that up so long. Oh, now I hear in it that... Uh, saying you know with our one-on-one -on -one, because we can do one-on-one -on -one, uh, teaching and things like that or, or help with the kids mm -hmm. uh, it would be uh, better for the kids how is that different how can you get one-on-one -on -one, uh, the classrooms are going to be smaller there's going to be um, aides and parent volunteers in every class it's going to okay. be a requirement and the the kids will get their one-on-one -on -one time okay. with the, either with the teacher or with an aide or whatever they need Okay, and uh, once again, that was something that happened at the uh, Alternative School, Valley Alternative mm -hmm. School. We had a lot of uh, uh, parents and uh, you know teachers and uh, mm -hmm. that would help out. Right. So, uh, so basically, that's where you get you get a lot of uh, TAs from the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, is that it? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a requirement of your having your child in the charter school. We really want to have a huge parent involvement. Well, okay, Ramona, and uh, stay here. Okay, thank you. And uh, stay with us. There's more news on the other side of the break. Watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN.